Welcome to the Three Championship Drive podcast on YouTube, hosted by me, Lance Caparossi. Follow me on X at Lance Caparossi, the same way you see it spelled on the screen. Do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, like the video, but more importantly, tell a Pistons fan. So we're doing this a couple weeks late, but the regular season is right around the corner. Training camp's about to start out, so I think it's a perfect time to talk about the regular season schedule. And the Pistons, they open the regular season against the Indiana Pacers. This will be the first home game of the season. Then the Detroit Pistons will face the Cleveland Cavaliers, Boston Celtics, Miami Heat, Philadelphia 76ers, and the New York Knicks before finally getting a break against the Brooklyn Nets. That is a brutal start to the NBA season for the Detroit Pistons. They play the Los Angeles Lakers. I think that's game eight. That will probably probably be Bronny James' first career start as well. If the Pistons, you know, do not, I mean, if they look poor to start the season, but it's a brutal start. Those were all playoff teams last year. The, I mean, dude, I don't even know what to say about the. Are, first we, are we starting zero and six? Like, that's is, what it feels like. I think that's it's going it to. Like I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, so. Do you think the do you think the NBA did that one on purpose? Just to be like, hey, here's this for you, dude. I know you just went through the gauntlet of the worst season ever, and here's your first six games. I don't blame the NBA. You know, I mean, I don't think you should be re- re- rewarded, even though you only won 14 games. <sighs> so I'm not blaming them. I'm, I'm not upset about it. I mean, it's a tough, tough start, but we're gonna see this new. Detroit Pistons under Trajan Langdon and J.B. Bickerstaff and see how they respond to these six teams. Now, something could happen. I mean, I'm my expectations are so low for the first six games that I'm like maybe one win. That's all I'm hoping for. That's it. I uh, So I went through and did the first 20, as uh, you recommended me do, and yeah. uh, it's not good. Um, because even home games, I s- still think with Detroit, I, I don't think it's going to really matter home or away for them getting wins. But okay. as of right now, I got one, two, three, four, five. I got them going six and getting six wins. So 14 and six in the first or six and 14 in their first 20 games. I, I really think in the first six with Pacers, Cavs, Celtics, Heat, Sixers, Knicks, I think the only one they can squeak out is the Cavs, maybe. Treat it like a revenge game or something. I don't know. You could you could maybe say it like that, even though it, it probably isn't. Um, but I do agree with you. I think Bronny gets his first start versus our 1-6 and six team. Uh, but who knows, man? Maybe they could surprise us. I mean, they played, they played Boston hard every time last year. So... That could be important. Um, maybe Ron Holland plays a little bit versus Boston because he talked about how much he wants to be a perimeter defender and wants to defend people like Jason Tatum and uh, Brown. But I don't, I don't know, man. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna, and I hope it doesn't affect the whole season. You know, I don't want these first six games to go as L's and it just really take a toll on this team. I think we have to look at it as at a sense that we're playing all playoff caliber teams. And we, it's going to be a long, long year. So, yeah, I mean, Cleveland might be a good one, but Donovan Mitchell, let me just, okay, so his numbers against the Detroit Pistons, he's played them 13 in 13 games. He's averaged 26, four and a half rebounds in 3.4 assists. He also has a 45 point game, which came last year <laughs> against the Detroit Pistons. He's, I don't know. He's only been under the mark of 26. It looks like just six times going back to his Utah days. He's, I don't know who can defend him for the Detroit Pistons. Like, I know you picked them to win. I I think Indiana, I think the home opener, the regular season opener as well, that might be the, that could be the first win of the season and, you know, get hopes and expectations set up for Pistons fans. But, man, Cleveland, they are a good team. I mean, Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, you got the Twin Towers and 
Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. And, you know, they might try to, as much as it is like a game for J.B. Bickerstaff to play against, you know, to coach against his former team, those guys going against him, they might be like, you know, licking their lips a little bit as well too. Like, hey, <laughs> you know, like, he, you know, we had success under him, but we're going to prove to everybody it wasn't just because of the coach. They could be going in with that type of mindset. So, I don't know, man, but it's it's tough to look at a win from this team. But, I mean, even against Indiana, Tyrese Halliburton has played nine games against them. He's averaging 18, 11, and four, and it looks like two steals per game as well. I just – that's going to be a bloodbath. He's had a 17-assist game, a 16-assist game, only three times in those nine games has he gone below 10 assists, and two of those games came in Sacramento. I mean, is there anything wrong with having a low bar set for us, though? Like, if we lose these games, we understand that these are very good teams. And it's and it's something to maybe test to see how good our, the new roster is. Maybe maybe it's not all, all bad. Like, we could go 0-6 and, and, like, average maybe losing by 6.5 points total within those games for each game. It's not It's not all bad, I don't think, but... When it comes to the Cavs, I, I don't think JB left any type of bad blood there. So I don't know if I could see it being treated like that. But I understand the concept that you're talking about is showing that we're successful not only because of him. Um, but it's just a tough stretch until you get to the Nets. But we've seen the Pistons drop games to teams that are a lot worse than them in the past. So it's... It's going to be hard. I just, the only thing I can say is what we've talked about all the time is just give this time. Even if the first six games don't go where we want them to actually go, like just give it time. Like there's so much that we have to figure out with this roster and what we're going to do and how, see how well they gel. Um, the biggest thing that bugs me, I think, the most about the first 20 games that they're playing is that they got to play the Sixers and the Raptors twice. I think that's kind of bullshit. I don't like having to get scheduled the Sixers two times in a 20 game span. Um, that that sucks because the Sixers are a very good team and so are the Raptors in my mind. I I just I don't know, Lance. I hope that everyone stays positive mind through it and not kind of throw Trajan under if they start one and eight. Um, but this is a very proud fan base, so maybe we take that route, but I mean, we're going to be here weekly talking about all the positivities that we can find within this organization. And, and no doubt there will be some positives from the start of the season. Like maybe Cade just looks like an all-star. Maybe he's averaging like 30 in the first 10 games or something. I don't know. Maybe Jalen Dern takes a leap as a defensive player. Maybe Asar finds a shot. Jaden Ivey finds a role with the Pistons where he can grow into it. There, there's a lot of positives that could come at yeah. the beginning of the season. But you're saying six and fourteen through the first twenty because that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking eight and twelve would be maybe a miracle. Yeah, but six six seems realistic. But as I'm looking through it, let's just say Indiana. Let's just go through the twenty games. Yeah. So Indiana, I, I'm going to say is a win. How are you feeling about that? I I I got an L. I have an L the first six. So L the first six. I have yep. them one in five in the first six. Okay. So then we're on to Brooklyn. That's a win. Win. Los Angeles Lakers. L. Yeah. Charlotte Hornets. Should be hopefully a win. Um, is it in Detroit? It's at Charlotte. It's at Charlotte. I mean and, and I, I know there'll be a couple Pistons fans there. I have them knocked down as a win for the Hornets. Okay. So do I. Atlanta. I got an L for Atlanta. Houston and L. Miami. This is a three game home stretch right here. Atlanta, Houston, Miami. I have the Rockets with a, a dub on the Rockets because I think they take that. I think Cade still takes that game personal. And I do think he is better than Green. I think, that's a, I think that's a dub. I think it's a dub. Miami. I'm going to say it's a. I'm going to say that's their first upset win. I'm going to say they go on a two game win streak against Houston and Miami. I could see them splitting in this first 20 because we have the Heat twice. So I okay. could give them a win here. And then we have Milwaukee. That's a loss. Toronto. It's at Toronto. Wouldn't even have mattered anyways. A lot of fans from Canada come down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For them. I like the, like, yeah, it's a home game. Yeah. They have se they actually have season tickets. Did you know that? 
Jesus. Dude, the things um, that come down, they just take a bus. And that, but, <laughs> yeah, dude. I've, all of them. Uh, the, the Wizards, man, like, why do we always play bad versus the Wizards? You notice that? I feel like we play bad versus the Wizards, but I, I do have them. That's, and it's a game that we should win, and somehow we find ways to lose them. But I do have a win versus Washington and the Bulls, actually. I hope they beat Washington after what Kyle Kuzma said last year. You don't want to be that team. That's that'd be phenomenal. So, so you're saying a win against Washington? I'm saying a win against Washington, Chicago. Yep. I got a dub versus Chicago. Yeah, they did get rid of Alex Caruso. Zach Levine could go. I mean, he's gone for fifty and lost. So yeah, <laughs> say that's a win too. Then back at Char- back at Charlotte. That's on NBA TV. Mm. I'll say that one's a loss. Then Most Orlando, likely. Toronto, Memphis. Orlando's probably a loss. Toronto again. We said the first one was a win. We said the second one is a loss. And then Memphis. I believe that's the first 20 games it ends with Memphis. If I counted right, which I think I did. Then I'm going to say that's a loss. Lance, well. Lance, how many Pistons, how many, how many games do we have scheduled for national TV this year? I just looked it up. How many? Do you know? Yeah, we have one. We have four. Are you counting? The, we have four this year? It says we have four. I'm actually surprised by that. I guess I did not know. I thought it was just one. <laughs> it says four. They'll probably take us, take them away. They They'll actually did take the one away last year. <laughs> they did. It was pretty bad. I believe it was against the Philadelphia 76ers, too. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, So let's just... Are there any games in the first 20 where you're just like circling on your calendar where you're like, this is must-watch TV, or I'm going to do my best to get to the game? Oh, my God. Um, I don't – I want to say yes, but I – but it's to see other – I want to see matchups yeah. from other teams. Like, if that's what we're going with, like, I would love to watch the Bucks game because I think the Bucks is a team at some point we need to be better than. Like, that's the goal. Like, because Milwaukee is, like, I would say one of the best teams in the Eastern, other than Boston. Like, I I think Milwaukee, like, if they don't have all those injuries last year, like, your two best players aren't playing in the playoffs at all. Um, I think they are better than Boston. Um, So, I would say that because I do, you have to find a way to stop Giannis. And I'm curious how JB would want to do that. And how he'd want to defend him, um, even though Giannis goes crazy on the Pistons every time he plays us, um, or or one of the, or one of the the Rockets game, because that that's always fun to watch as well. It would be fun if they're playing Milwaukee, and then JB Bickerstaff just says, <clears throat> "I'm going to throw Asar Thompson on Giannis and see if he can do something with him." <sighs> you know, I mean, I, I mean, there's definitely a size difference, but I got to do something. Yeah, and strength wise, Asar could actually keep up a little bit. You're not going to stop Giannis, though. It's like trying to. Who did? Chat. Who did we have defending him last year? Dude, I could. Was it? Oh, it wasn't Stewart. Stewart. It was Stewart. Stewart. Does an adequate job though. He can frustrate him. I forget the numbers. I think it was like Jack Kelly. He posts them from time to time, and I think they are in favor of Isaiah Stewart. So it's. But it's foul trouble, man. I, Giannis gets every call, man. Like it's hard to keep beef stew out there the whole time, and he's definitely not as conditioned as Giannis is. So, I I don't know, man. I when I when the schedule first came out and I took a peek at this, I just kind of rolled my eyes because this is like this is going to be a really rough start. Um, but I hope they get it together like before the in season tournament type play comes around because I would like to see them compete for something like that. Um, but. This is going to be rough. I, I, and what was our over under that we were talking about? Was it 26 and a half? I think it was 25 and a half. Three or 24 and a half. Yeah, talking about the overs. I still think with the schedule, I still think they can win that amount of games. Um, but it's not going to be at the beginning of the season because this I'm, is pretty brutal. I mean, even though 23 wins this season would be an improvement from last year, it's still somewhat of a disappointment to me because I want to see them at least get to 25, which. That do that's that would be an eleven game improvement, but for some reason, like under twenty five, it just seems like such a huge disappointment for me. But I've talked to you about going to the home opener. We'll move on after this. But Indiana, 
I want to see Benedict Mather and Jaden Ivey again, like how they were yeah. in like the rookie sophomore, whatever that is now called the uh, league's brightest and youngest or something, whatever they want to call it. Rising stars. Yeah. Rising stars. <laughs> and, uh, it was fun to see them kind of like get a little lippy with each other, get a little chippy. So I want to see that. And Tyrese Alliburton always has a chip on his shoulder when he's going against Detroit. And he's out, like he's one of those guys that I just love to watch outside of the Detroit Pistons. And I hate what he does to the Pistons, but he is fun to watch. And then Cleveland, Donovan Mitchell, one of my favorite guards as well. Jason Tatum. He's always played pretty well in 20 games, averaging 24, 6, and 4.5 and against the Pistons. Jimmy Butler for the Heat, 18, 5, and 4 in 31 games. Embiid, 30, 11, and 2 in 19 games. And then Jalen Brunson, he's averaged 21, 5, and 2, but if you don't count the Dallas games and you just count the New York Knicks games, he's averaging over 27 a game against the Detroit Pistons. So even if the Pistons lose, you might be able – you're at least going to see good basketball from the other team. And I'm sure some people just turned us off as soon as I said that. But, like, dude, that's just the reality when you play yeah. Pistons. Yeah, most of the time I think it's uh, – I went to a Chicago Bulls-Pistons game probably two years ago, and I saw way more Chicago gear than Detroit gear. And that's just kind of how it's been recently is people are going to watch other teams, like people that are fans of teams in other states or far away. They're going to go to the Pistons game to watch their favorite players on another team. Like that's, it's been a thing for the last couple of years. So um, question for you. I don't know. Have you like gone through this schedule? Have you looked at everything or no? Um, I've looked at a majority of it. So, so with that, um, what's a game that you want to go to out of the whole thing? Like, cause I know my, uh, the whole thing and, and I, I obviously to be a home game, cause that's the ones that we can attend unless you want to go to Chicago or Indiana, but I would rather not do that. Um, but yeah, out of the entire schedule, because I'm looking at the January 31st game versus the Mavericks. I think that would be a lot of fun to go to. That's funny. Cause that's actually one of the games that I have like starred um yeah. or i would like to go with you to february 28th nuggets versus the pistons i mean it depends well. on what kind of nikola Jokic i'm getting oh if he's healthy then yeah 100 percent. we no, can i mean if he's going to be like invested in the game because last year i think he had like i don't know 14 assists against the pistons we're gonna get a quarter out of him dude uh, what do you want? What else do you want? I mean, but It was fun, though, because he dominated the game without, like, I think he only put up, like, six shots in this game. And then he just argued with the refs to get kicked out. He just wanted a break. But um, I really want to I really want to go to a Toronto game because I do love Scotty Barnes. Phoenix is another game on January 18th. San Antonio Spurs see, come to town March 25th. Yeah, it'd be fun to see Victor Wembanyama. Yep, and see how massive he actually is in person. Yeah. I would be for that, yeah. And you get to see Chris Paul. That'd be fun. Yeah, I'm good on that. You can get his autograph. Yeah, I mean, dude, I would. <laughs> It'd be fun. Um, but again, Phoenix, that'd be a fun game because of Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. Yep. Um, it just sucks, though, because, I mean, as we talk about these games, like people go to see their favorite players, but most of the time they sit out for these games. And I mean, it kind of sucks. I mean, rules in the NBA. I want to see the Charlotte Hornets live if LaMelo Ball is going to play. Okay, January 3rd. I am a fan of LaMelo. I think he's really good. Mm -hmm. Um, Dude, yeah, that would probably be – I mean, I would really love to attend every one of these games, but – Yeah. Yeah, I mean, without – with just taking a glance at it again, those would be some games I'd want to see. Those are the players. Kevin mm -hmm. Durant, Kevin Booker. I mean, the Lakers, I mean, the Lakers yeah. game is in Detroit. Yeah, that'd be fun too. I've seen LeBron James a couple times in person. I've never watched LeBron play in person. I've met him in person in Chicago. Well, that's interesting. I got a fist bump. That's about it. Did you so, pretend to be a fan? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's how you get a fist bump. <laughs> okay, so I saw a ranking on Reddit. I'm stealing it. We're going to rank these guards of the Eastern Conference. Oof. We have Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey, Cade Cunningham, and LaMelo Ball. They're all on the screen right now. And... I don't know. We're going to do this two ways. We're going to rank them based on 
how they played last year, and then we're going to rank them on their ceiling, what we think they could be. So I would go, without looking at the numbers, my order would be Tyrese Halliburton before the injury, Tyrese Maxey, Cade Cunningham, LaMelo Ball. That would be my four, one through four. I have Tyrese Maxey, Hurt Halliburton, Cade, LaMelo. So LaMelo's fourth for you as well? Y- yes, he would be last. Because um, this you said talking about last year? Yeah. He was injured for a decent amount of the year. So um, I don't know I don't know how many games he played, but he was hurt. Um, but if we're – but, I mean, it'll be different talking about ceiling with these guys as well. Yeah, I have a feeling LaMelo Ball will not be fourth. Last year he only played 22 games, but in those 22 he averaged 23.9, five rebounds, eight assists. Shot 43% from the field, 35% from three, 86% from the line. Mm-hmm. While giving you almost two steals per game. The thing with him is just always been injury. Yep. He's super talented. But Tyrese Maxey, last year, 70 games, 70 starts, 25.9, 6, and 3.7 with the steal. He had a heck of a season last year. Yep. He had to. He had to get that team to the playoffs with him being missing a lot of time. And then Tyrese Halliburton, 23.9 and 10.9 assists, shooting 47% from the field, 36% from the three-point line with over with a steal a game and in, in 0.7 blocks. Like and kept his turnovers down to 2.3, which is incredible. So he would be my top spot. Now, but if we're talking ceiling specifically, mm-hmm. LaMelo's number one for me. Same. And this is this is crazy. I'm taking K just because he's a bigger guard. He would be number two. Then Tyrese Halliburton, then Tyrese Maxey. I have LaMelo, LaMelo, Tyrese Maxey, Cade Cunningham, Halliburton. What do you got Maxey number two? I'm curious. Maxey, I still think we – last year was just a flash of him being a dominant guard because with Embiid, he doesn't – they don't ask for him to do as much when Embiid is healthy. And we got to see a part of Tyrese's game that I think can continually climb. Like, I don't think it's going to stop. Like, I think he's going to end up being one of the best guards in the league within the next two or three years. I think his ceiling is high. And I just, I think, and with LaMelo's ball skills, like you said, if his injuries weren't a thing, his stats would be a lot different. Um and that's why I have Lamel at number one because I think his his handle is one of the best in the NBA as well and how he facilitates. Like his passes are smooth, man. And I really enjoy watching Lamelo play. I only have Halliburton last because I think we've kind of seen everything Halliburton brings to the table. Like I think with the other guys, I think there's still like a Cade still has a lot to show. Like we still there's still a lot we have to learn about his game because we haven't really matched him with players of his caliber. So we we don't really know how well Kate is with better shooters on the roster. I think Tyrese has been playing with very good players, majority. So we've seen everything that he's given us. And it's just gonna it's gonna continue to get better. But I think everything that we've got shown from uh Tyrese Halton Burton, it's not we're not gonna be seeing anything different in the future. Yeah, but I mean, if this is what he's giving people for the rest of his career, it's pretty good. No, I mean, he if he does this, he obviously could be a future Hall of Famer. Um, but he needs to, uh, I, I don't know. I just, when it comes to LaMelo, I, I just think the way he plays is so smooth. And we've been kind of held to just a little showing of what he can do in the NBA. I don't think, I don't think he becomes super successful on the team he's at. I think he needs to go somewhere different or get a better supporting cast around him. Um, but I think his ceiling is incredibly high. Yeah, I feel like this is a guy that could average close to a triple double. Yeah. In the Because his size is huge. I think he's taller than Cade. He's got to be close. They list him at six seven on basketball reference. Correct. And that's a very with his handles and his speed at six seven a guard, it's incredible. Um yeah, so, you wonder what it would be like if he could stay healthy and just I mean, yeah. I'm sure he loves the game of basketball, but it seems like sometimes there are other distractions in his life. Yeah. Like you just you just have to wonder like if this dude just focused on basketball and being a great player, yep. how high could he climb? Yeah. Like are we looking at an all time great player with LaMelo Ball if he just 
focuses on it. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? I think he's like this weird blend of like Magic Johnson and Penny Hardaway. I mean, I'm not saying he's on their level right now, but mm-hmm. with like the flash and the all around game and how he gets his guys involved, how he can play in the yeah. half court, how he can play in transition, like how he's just always looking to push that pace. Like, there's a very fun and exciting player in LaMelo Ball that, I mean, hopefully we get at least 65 games of him. Yeah. The, you know, for the, at least this season. I just want to see him play. And I want to see him be an all star, man. Like, I, because I think he has, a, before, but... he has the potential to keep doing that. Oh, dude, we're looking at like a guy that could be an all NBA team member if he yeah. just stays healthy. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what I want to see from LaMelo. And like, so the reason I have him number one, just because of the potentials there, Cade, he's another big guard. I think Cade right now, along with Tyrese Maxey, is a three level scorer. You just have to see him just be more consistent everywhere. You know, I mean, like, and continue to work around the rim, but like, and just the way he controls the game at, in the maturity he brings at his age, there's just something you, you haven't even seen Cade scratch the surface yet. And Tyrese Halliburton, like, he's another big guard at six foot five. I think the reason I have him number three, though, is he's kind of slight of frame, a little skinny. I don't think he could really get after it defensively, but in college, he averaged like, two steals and a block per game, I think. And I think a lot of people thought that would translate to the NBA, but they, they're just much more bigger guards. They're much stronger than they are in college. So I just think, like, if he could figure it out defensively at his size, you can hide him a little bit. Like, you could ask him, not necessarily to guard point guards. You have Matherin on that team. I think he could do it. But Tyrese Halliburton, I just think, like, I think you're right also that we've probably seen what we're seeing from him. Like, he's very efficient. He's, again, one of these guards that loves to push the pace. He's very yeah. good at finding people and getting them involved and just getting easy looks for him. That's what I love about Tyrese Halliburton. But Maxie, it's like he's so – the reason I have him number four is like everything is just – he has to score the ball at a really high level to be effective because he is the smallest of these guards. Like, you know what I mean? He can get picked on on the defensive side yeah, by teams. And like – his playmaking has gotten better. I think he's increased his assist number every year from two his rookie year to six this year. But I just don't know if he's that type of guard where he's creating plays in the half court, creating plays for guys in the transition. He's a guy that I think could get close to 30 points per game out of anybody on this list. But I just see the guys generating more offense with their playmaking, and that's why I have them as – they may not be the best, better scorers. He might be the best scorer out of the four, but in terms of the guy, the other three guys, they blend that scoring and playmaking so well that I have them higher on the list. And Cade and Lamelo, they do kind of. I mean, I, none of these guys are great defenders, but Cade and Lamelo, they do have the size where they can be effective defensively. Correct, One and Tyrese Maxey. And when you were talking about like just Lamelo, maybe like questioning his commitment. Um, or his love for the game and stuff like that and outside noise. As much as it's not really for me to say as an insult, like his his dad did a lot for him to kind of get where all of these, like him and his brother is. Um, so, I mean, from him coming from that type of publicity because it was consistent before he was even in the league, like this kid was getting national attention when he was in high school. Yeah. Um, so for him kind of growing up and being in the position he is with – being so i guess you could say famous at a young age because he was like that type of youtube sensation of him shooting half court shots being guarded by all five players and still making shots like he's kind of grown up into something and molded himself into something not like what his dad wants but i think what he wants so i think being that famous at a young age really like makes you mature faster and I think I think he handled it pretty well. Um, I think it's more the injuries than anything than off the court issues. I still think he does love the game. But my favorite thing about Lamelo, and I think it probably does come from just his family in general. But he doesn't his mindset towards the game like he does his motor. He's a gamer. I can see him just being a gamer. I don't see him really doing being that practice type player. I see him just flexing in the game. Um, but his mentality just to have no like no conscience when he's missing shots because he'll just keep shooting. And that's what I like the most about him because he knows what he is. He knows he's a shooter and he knows what he provides for his team. And him, he could be 0 for 9, Lance, and he's still going to shoot four more threes. 
Because he just does it. There's no memory and there's no concept of it for him. And that's why I like him at that guard position is because if they need points, he can be a walking bucket whenever he wants, no matter what he's done for three quarters. At the fourth quarter, he could be 0 for 20 the entire game, but he's going to want the final shot no matter what. And I like that about him when he leads that team. Yeah, I do like the idea. I do like what you're bringing up about him, you know, having that short-term memory like that. Yeah. I missed nine shots, but I'm going to keep taking them. You know, that's the, dude, that's the Mamba mentality. That's what Kobe Bryant said. Like, I'm not going to stop at 0 for 9. I'm just going to keep shooting. You know, and I do like that about LaMelo Ball. And I just, like I said, I wish you'd hit the weights because, you know, that's just a dude that, you know, needs to really take care. I think all of these guys really need to take care of their body. I think any professional athlete does. I mean, it's what you, that's how you make your money. But, you know, take care of your body, limiting the injuries, but then also just focusing on the game and trying to be great. Because yep. Melo really could be one of the best. I mean, maybe not like one of the top five guards to ever play, but like dude, top 15, potentially even top 12, top 10. That's, yep. Dude, I mean, he has the talent to do something. He's, and he's still so young, man. He's got yeah. all the time in the world to c- continuously progress. Because maybe even like seeing him be on an all-NBA team or being on a second all-NBA team, maybe that changes someone's mentality, dude. He's like, holy shit, like I didn't even try and I made this. Like, could you imagine what would happen if I took it more seriously or um, I worked harder in the off season type stuff. So, but I, I enjoy watching LaMelo play. Like even if Detroit's not playing them, sometimes I will just yeah. watch Charlotte play because I do enjoy their style of basketball. And plus their announcers are phenomenal. They so are, I will listen to them any day of the week because man, anytime they dunk the ball, dude, they are jumping out of their seats and freaking out. So I enjoy watching Charlotte games. They do. It makes you a little jealous of. I mean, George Blaha, he's great. Don't get me wrong. Special K is great as well. But when you hear these other announcers, these yep. broadcasters, and how they get into the game, like it makes you it makes you a little jealous, just a little bit. Count that baby in a foul. Jealous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Windmill dunk. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna have a final segment. Hopefully, this is reoccurring on the podcast. Hopefully, we're always ending the. Podcast. Which was a surprise to me and not communicated to me. Well, I wanted it to be a surprise. That was All right. I All showed right. you before what you're we doing, but it's uh, Pistons trivia. So you cannot look up. I'm going to ask you just one question to start it off. And I don't know. Do you want to ask your question first? No, you can go first. It's your, it's your, it's your new segment. All right. So here's the question. Who had the most double-doubles in their career out of these four? Now, they're all in the top ten. They've all played over 350 games for the Detroit Pistons. It's actually all really, honestly, pretty close for them. It's a, yeah, well, Ben Wallace played 655, Grant Hill 435, Greg Monroe 378, mm-hmm. and Chauncey Bill was 482. But who had the most double doubles out of these four? I want to say Grant Hill. You want to say Grant Hill? Okay. I want to say Grant Hill. Why Grant Hill? Because when I looked at all three of these guys, he's the one that I didn't get to watch the most. So I feel like maybe he surpassed all three of the others. Like, because being 30 years old and watching the Pistons, like, I only got, I didn't really get to see a lot of Grant Hill growing up. Uh, I watched some Ben Wallace. I watched a little bit of Chauncey, but out of all of them, I watched the most of Greg Monroe. Um, And I don't want to say it's Greg Monroe because I'd be pretty depressed if he had more than the other three. Well, also Grant Hill, like his second and third year, he almost averaged a triple double. He was pretty much he was averaging twenty nine point eight and six point nine his second year, third year twenty one nine and seven. I mean, he was putting up some great numbers for the Pistons. So it is a good, it's a dude. It's a great guess, and I'll tell you where he is on the list. He's actually number six on the list with one hundred and forty nine tri- double doubles. Okay. Ben Wallace is number seven with 139. Chauncey Billups is number nine with 67. And Greg Monroe is number five with 100. That's crazy because I was I was thinking about picking him because he I mean Moose was good for a little bit of time. Dude, like I I like to watch him. He was so slow. But I liked watching him, and he was a horrible duo with Andre, Andre Drummond. Oh, my God, that was so bad. It was garbage. That was the slowest front court we've ever had, ever, in Detroit. 
Um, but no, that's crazy that he had. That's that's. I would, I knew it wasn't going to be Chauncey. I mean, dude, Chauncey had a lot of like ten assist games with like ten to twenty points, a handful of them. But Greg Monroe for his career played three hundred seventy eight games. He averaged fourteen and nine with two assists and one steal, and point six blocks. Yeah, he was he, Greg Monroe. Sadly, was one of my favorite players. I don't even mean to say sadly, but he was one of my favorite players in a Pistons uniform, and I really wish. Look, I loved Andre Drummond, who, by the way, is number one on this list with 402 double doubles in 591 games. Uh-huh. He's he's phenomenal. I mean, he probably has. I think he's number one in total rebounds. So I could be wrong about that, but Andre Drummond was a beast. But it just didn't work together. I don't know why Joe Dumars drafted both of them. When the league was getting smaller, he's like, no, we're going to go with two Twin Towers. <laughs> we're just going to go yeah. with Greg Monroe and Andre Drummond. And I really feel like if you could have used Greg Monroe at the five, he's not a franchise player, but like there was probably a way where you could have used him at the five and still had some success in that era with him versus Andre Drummond. Yeah, like, I feel like if you gave Greg Monroe Andre Drummond's athletic ability, or if you gave Andre Drummond Greg Monroe's kind of like mentality to be great, probably would have had a heck of a player. But, but I also kind of made it this graphic. By the way, if you look at all three of Ben Wallace, Grant Hill, and Chauncey, they're kind of looking in the direction of Greg Monroe. <laughs> uh, so, you, so you tried to hint it, yeah, a little bit. Uh, and that's my that's the first question. These will probably get significantly harder as we do more of these, but I'm hoping we can keep this as a segment. But you told me you also had a question when I surprised this with you. So. Yeah, um, so you if you get the year, I'll be thoroughly impressed. Um, but I have, uh, who was the first Piston with more than 1,000 defensive rebounds in the season? More than one? How, dude, how far are we going back with this? Was hey, I, I didn't know. I didn't know how hard your question was going to be, so I just did this one. Okay. Yeah. So was I alive at this time? Yeah. Oh, so it's be after nineteen ninety. Yeah. Okay. With a thousand rebounds in a career. I mean, first a thousand rebounds in a season. Yes. Defensive rebounds. Yes. I don't want to say it's Ben Wallace because I mean. That feels like it would be too obvious, but um, played in the nineties, dude. I feel like this should be so. No, it's not. I want to look it up so badly too. It's the worm, bro. The worm. God, I was gonna guess Jerome Williams. I'm gonna it's, guess the, <laughs> it's the worm. Dog. I should have guessed Dennis Rodman. Yeah, I got that. Dennis Rodman, man, ninety-one, ninety-two. I didn't know how hard your question was going to be, dude. So no, I had to pick fine, one. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I wouldn't. I won't pick anything. Uh, I won't do a question that you're not that like you weren't here to experience. You have to be able to be alive and attempt to know the information, not something in nineteen seventy-five. I'm not going to do that to you. But Dennis yeah, Rodman, man, more fun with it, though. I Dennis more Rodman's fun. a dog, man. That he was. Did you see that Angel Reese was wearing his jersey for the game against the? the I Angels? really hope. I really, yeah. But uh, okay, we're not going to talk about that. I just hope Jalen Duran's actually not dating Angel Reese. Please don't do that to us. I didn't. I didn't deserve this. God, I didn't. I don't want to go through this. If I have to go a whole season of the media, just hey, look at the best rebounders in the WNBA and NBA. Oh, I might. Dude, I, I might I lose NBA. my mind. I will lose my mind. Lance, I won't go to a game with you. I can't do it. It's too much, man. Dude, what are the chances Jalen Dern wears an Angel Reese jersey to the game? I would <laughs> stop. We need to get close to ending this. I um so back to <laughs> back to us talking about so the first six games are a gauntlet, right? Yeah. If the Pistons somehow can go four and two in their first six games. I will buy us both a beef stew jersey. Oh, okay. I'm down with that. I will commit to that. I will commit to that, and then after that happens, obviously we'll do a stream, and we'll both have our beef stew jersey. I will buy two of them. Okay, okay. If that happens. 
are you getting teal? Are we getting the red alternates? Like, what kind of jerseys are we getting here? Just sort of classic Over, white? I want to throw it back. Okay. I'll probably throw it back. Or whatever is cheaper on Amazon. <laughs> they got to be on discount. They have you're to. Right, they can't you're right, you're be expensive. Right. Like, at least 30 bucks a jersey. Like, it can't be $100. There's no shot. They don't even know who he is. They're like, we make these? He's one of the most popular Pistons players currently right now. <laughs> like, they're going to be a little bit more. $30. What are you living? Were you buying a TJ Maxx? Coles? Looking in the, the clearance section? I don't think they have. that, Dude, Coles is too good for the Pistons jerseys, man. I don't even think they have those there. Do they even have Pistons shirts? I don't even think they do, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think they do. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. We do appreciate it. That was the three championship drive podcast. Do us a favor, go to Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts and hit the follow button. After you hit the follow button, rate with five stars, leave a review, but t- you know, drop a question that I can ask on the show and I'll give you a shout out. But more importantly, tell a Pistons fan.